Hi, everybody, and welcome to our webinar on getting into the granular details with listings. Um, so excited to have you today, as well as be joined by um, our listings product managers um, and excited to get into it. Um, so today we we're joined by Calvin Casalino, Teddy Riker, Pat Huang, and I'm Jesse. Um, and so um, each of those people are product managers and I'm on the product marketing team. Um, and we're all excited to talk about listings. Um, so we're gonna first talk about the importance of listings as well as get into some tips and tricks on how to improve your ranking with Google. Um, and then we're also gonna talk about some new features that we have in Yex listings, uh, do a quick demo, cover what's next in Yex listings, and then um, take some questions from all of you. Um, and so I wanna make sure everyone's aware there's a Q&A module at the bottom of your uh, Zoom screen where you can enter questions throughout the, the presentation. So we would love to hear from you um, and we're excited to, to see what's on your mind and answer those questions for you. So feel free to start sending them in uh, as soon as you have them and we'll, we'll take them at the end. Um, so without further ado, I will hand it over to Calvin to talk about the importance of listings. Great, so let's get into the importance of listings here. Um, so on this slide, we have just a bunch of screenshots of different listings. Um, you can think of listings as your digital storefront. It's really how uh, your potential customers and consumers find you on the web. Um, so on this slide, you know, we have listings for Google, Facebook, Yelp, TripAdvisor, Apple. Um, it's very, very important that you have your information correct and consistent everywhere a consumer might find it on the web. And so, you know, there's a lot of well-known sites that support listings, uh, but there's also some lesser known ones. There's, there's over a, a few hundred and having your information correct everywhere uh, is extremely important because all of these lead to uh, good signals uh, for Google and the other search engines. And so let's dive into Google a little bit more specifically. Um, this is coming directly, directly from Google um, and, and their documentation and sort of how they determine local ranking. So we'll talk through uh, how this works, and then we'll get into some features that actually help us on the X side. So the, the three main factors for local ranking are distance, relevance, and prominence. And we'll go through what each of these mean in, in detail. So starting with distance, um, this one's a little bit more obvious. It's basically uh, how far uh, is, is the user searching from uh, the actual listing that could be returned. Um, so, so for example, if you're searching coffee near me and you as a user are in New York, um, we're only going to see listings for New York, of course. And so um, having that correct address, that correct lat long uh, is extremely important. So uh, your listings can show up when people are searching for those near me searches or searches with uh, different geo modifiers. Uh, the next one here is relevance. Um, this is basically how relevant is your listing to be returned. So um, the most obvious way that uh, this comes through as your category. So again, for this example of coffee near me, you can see there's only coffee shops being returned. So that primary category is a really strong signal uh, to your return your listing. But there's also some less obvious ways that, that this happens. So one of them could be your store hours. So let's say that that search instead of coffee near me was coffee near me open now. Um, if Google didn't know your hours and didn't know that you were open, um, you would not be relevant for that search and you wouldn't show up. So other important uh, you know, pieces of your listings uh, can, can contribute to this. Um, this also comes up for things like menu items or service lists. Um, if someone's searching for a specific dish, for example, let's say they're looking for like French fries. If you don't have that listed on your menu on Google, um, you're, you're less likely to show up. Um, so having that complete profile is extremely important. Um, another good one is attributes. So these are... Um, a bunch of different fields you can fill out about your business. Um, they vary based on your category and country. Um, but you know, a, a few examples could be, uh, you know, if your business is handicap accessible, um, or if you're a hotel, if you have a swimming pool, for example. So think of someone's doing a, a search for a hotel near me that has a swimming pool. Um, if you don't have that attribute filled out, again, you're you're not as relevant to be returned, um, and your rank is going to suffer for that. Um, and then finally. The, probably the most indirect way, but is also very interesting, um, is something like reviews or Q&A. So um, what Google does is they index that content um, so that it can help uh, for search. So let's say, for example, you're receiving a ton of reviews um, that your service is really good or that your wait times are really short. Um, if someone performs a query that contains those types of strings, um, again, your listing can be returned just because someone left a review 
um, contain that content. Uh, so having that engagement on your listing is also as important as, as that factual information that appears on your profile. Um, so a lot of this goes into the relevance uh, you know, computation for you to be returned. And then finally, prominence. Um, this is very loosely how well known a business is. Um, these are things like reviews and UGC. Um, so making sure that you are engaging with reviews, um, you are responding to questions on your listing and you are making local posts. Having all of that uh, local and unique content is a great way to get people to engage. And the more people engage with your listings, you know, the better that you'll do with local rank. So to sum up, you wanna have really good address data. Um, you wanna make sure that you have a complete profile everywhere. Um, and you wanna make sure that you're, you're handling things like reviews, Q and A and, and posting. Now the next slide, these are Google's recommendations for how to improve local ranking. So we've gone through some of this, but think of this as just like a checklist to ensure that you have all of this uh, completed. So the first one, and this is by far the most important one, um, you know, we, we've talked to, to Google a bunch of times, you know, with, with our customers, you know, at, a, at our annual conference, um, people always ask, you know, what's the secret to ranking higher in search? Um, what Google always says is to make sure you enter complete data, you have a, a full profile. So you're filling out every single possible field that you can fill out and it's up to date. Um, the next one here is making sure your location is verified. You know, if your location is not verified, it's not going to show up. That's a, that's a pretty um, you know, easy rule to use there. So there's a bunch of great ways that UX can help out with verification, um, both uh, in, in bulk or individually for your locations. Um, the next one here is, is keeping hours accurate. Google's very focused on hours right now. You may have seen that you know, Google's using AI data. There's a, there's a blog post to, to fill out additional content on maps, or even Google has their duplex system. That's sort of their, their AI call system that will call a business and have a very human-like conversation to ask them about business hours. So keeping your hours up to date is more important than ever. Um, next is this just engagement with listings. So again, that's, that's those reviews, those Q&A and those local posts. The more that you have this fresh content, um, the, the better you'll do in search. And then finally, local photos are great. Um, you can see here on, on the X knowledge card, there's a great photo of our office that makes you wanna click on that and learn more. So having that, those unique local photos uh, is really, really important. Um, so that sums up sort of the importance of listings uh, and how to do well on Google. Uh, a lot of the features that we have help out with this. Um, so now I'm gonna turn it over to Teddy. Um, he's going to go through some of the new features that just came out in listings uh, and demo a few of them for you today. Hello, everyone. Uh, and just give me one second. I'm going to steal the screen from Calvin here. Okay. Calvin, you, can you confirm that you can see this? Yep, looks great. Cool. So hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Teddy, also a product manager for listings and reviews products. Um, I'm here to just kind of walk through some of the new features that are available in Next Listings as of the last couple of months as we've been doing a ton of work to improve the ability for users to control and manage their listings at scale across all the different networks we have available. So starting off with the Publishers tab, uh, the Publishers tab is our you know, newest you know, uh, headline feature, which is basically just an overview screen that displays a high level um, summary of all of your listings data at the publisher level. So uh, in the past, we've always kind of showed listings and locations, you know, on a per entity basis. So you would see, you know, how a given location was performing on a publisher, um, just as a one-to-one -one mapping. But we found that um, a lot of customers and users, you know, it's helpful to actually think about their network and publisher buckets, because you think about, you know, setting up Google or Apple, each of them might require different steps. There might be different workflows for resolving issues within the publisher network. So uh, by separating these out into different objects, it just allows us to simplify the actions of actually managing your listing. So rather than being daunted by 114,000 listings in this example um, that you might have in your account, you know, it's a lot easier to kind of work through the, the most important publishers to you and get to those over time. So uh, the great part about this page as well is that, you know, it provides the entry point to actually configuring the granular details of each of these publishers. So um, this next slide is showing, you know, what happens when you actually click into one of these publishers from the overview tab. Um, so this is an example of Facebook. Uh, you can see we've got some you know, information about Facebook, you know, what type of platform it is. I think most people probably are familiar with uh, that it's a social media platform, um, an important resource for, for customers that are searching for information. But 
know, Yext has over 150 different publishers in its network. Um, and just navigating to these pages can sometimes be a helpful exercise to understand where exactly the data is going and what the value is of sending, you know, your information to some random uh, website that maybe you've never heard of until Yext. And so kind of just walking through this page a bit, uh, you can see right below the description, we've got this section for affiliated publishers. Um, so an affiliated publisher is just any publisher that Yext does not have a direct integration with. So what this means is that Facebook actually sent, takes our data and then passes it along to Instagram. Uh, there's a step between us and Instagram where Facebook gathers that data um, and, and massages it and puts it into Instagram's format. So we don't have um, a way of updating listings on Instagram directly, but when we do update our Facebook directory, um, we know that those updates are being propagated to Instagram as well. Um, we've also got you know, some more details. So you know, some hero numbers again, you can see the overview of the listings on the specific publisher, um, as well as, as that entity table, <clears throat> excuse me, that I was talking about earlier. So this is where you would um, you know, look through all of the you know, entities that are uh, synced to Facebook or not synced and troubleshoot issues um, and make sure that everything's working correctly. Um, another cool feature of these new publisher detail pages is the publisher alert. Um, so Yex has so many publishers in the network, you know, every once in a while, one or more of them could be running into issues, whether it's, you know, their APIs are down, maybe they're unable to update listings, maybe we're not receiving analytics back from them. Um, just due to the breadth of the, the network, you know, things just happen to break every once in a while. And so the way we actually communicate that in platform is through a publisher alert. Um, and so on every publisher configuration page, whenever something may be going wrong, uh, you'll be able to find alert here, an alert. In this example, uh, we're using local database. You know, this is just letting customers know that local database is currently experiencing technical issues, APIs are down. Um, so any actions they try to take on that listing, you know, while this alert is up, um, you know, they might not be expecting, you know, or performing as expected. So this is just another uh, point of view where people can see any ongoing issues. We also have the X Trust site um, as well as the status board um, to communicate issues with publishers, but this is kind of the first instance where we've actually moved those alerts um, and warnings into the platform itself. Um, so anyone who's actually you know, in the middle of a workflow or managing their listings can see right in line um, anything that might be disrupting that. Um, and so moving on to the next portion of the publisher detail pages, which are really helpful, uh, is these custom configuration settings. So for our really high touch publishers like Facebook and Google and Yelp, which often require like a little more TLC and custom requirements for syncing listings, um, we have these configuration pages which help people give more control over exactly what data is being sent to the publisher. So what does this mean? So by default for any publisher, Yext will uh, choose which knowledge graph fields get delivered to the corresponding field and publisher. So um, you know we have a field in Yext for business name um, and nine times out of 10, when we set up sync with the publisher, you know, we'll send that business name and update the business name field on the directory accordingly. So um, in some cases, you know, that may not be desired for kind of these higher profile publishers. So for example, maybe for SEO reasons or for internal organization reasons, uh, you want your name on Google to say something like Teddy Spaghetti Restaurant Group, uh, but you want your name on Facebook to only say something like Teddy Spaghetti. Uh, maybe this is a requirement, you know, for a marketing team or, you know, you think there's an SEO benefit of, of having restaurant group or the lack thereof within the name on the listing. With the, these custom configuration settings, you can actually choose the source of the data for each publisher. So um, if I wanted to make sure that my field, my name on uh, Facebook was always just Teddy Spaghetti, um, I would use what's called a knowledge graph field override. Um, and I can actually change the destination from that standard business field uh, in Knowledge Graph and move it to a custom field where I could then input, you know, whatever custom naming I wanted uh, for all my Facebook listings. Um, additionally, um, let's say a user already had content on their listings that they're happy with. So, you know, they have, they don't want to overwrite their name. They know their website's perfect. Um, we actually have the ability to just turn off sync altogether. Uh, so when you first connect to your listings, you can see in the middle row here um, on the table, if one of those sync settings is off, that means that Yext will never touch that data. So anything that was there before we started to connect to it, you know, will preside um, and you'll never have to run the risk of it getting overwritten by maybe a user in Yext doing something wrong, or um, maybe you want to use that URL for another purpose and not have it update on, on Facebook or whatever publisher you choose. 
um, and kind of just going a little bit deeper into the sync setting. So um, for a little bit of context, Google, we have some additional sync settings for Google um, because Google's a little bit more sensitive um, when it comes to verifying listings. So getting listings verified on Google is a crucial process for having them appear in search and gathering impressions, optimizing SEO. Um, but actually that verification process that verification process can actually take two to three weeks sometimes. Um, it's typically pretty manual. Um, Google will send a postcard, the business owner will receive a postcard and they'll have to enter a code in um, somewhere on Google's site to actually activate that listing. And Google's really sensitive to changes in listings. So there are certain fields like if the business name or address or phone number are changed, that can actually re-trigger that verification process and cause that listing to go into uh, essentially just a, a degraded state where it doesn't have as much SEO optimization as it did when it was verified. So um, what we've done recently is just made sure that we have support for users to turn off the sync for all those fields. So the use case here is if I already have a live listing on Google that I'm very happy with, I want to use Yex to you know, update things like my service hours or description or other kind of like low importance fields, but I'm worried that oh, maybe I'll accidentally change the category and then trigger re-verification state and have to redo my postcard process. You can now control that with the Google configuration settings. So um, if I wanted to make sure that, no, I'm, I know my categories are correct. I don't want to overwrite them with let's index. I can turn that sync setting off uh, before I ever launch and for all future listings, um, just to keep my listings in a safe state while still being able to update all of the other cool data that we make available via the X. Um, you can see on the right here that all of these sensitive fields, uh, we call these destructive fields because they can re-trigger verification status, have nice warnings next to them. So in case anyone does you know, flip a sync from, from off to on, uh, they, they're aware that it actually might affect the verification status of their listings. <clears throat> uh, so moving on to some other updates in the Publishers tab. So um, with the winter release, uh, originally the Publishers tab only had publishers available for location listings, um, but we also have lots of other publishers available on our network. Uh, we have publishers for review monitoring, uh, we have publishers for social posting, um, and we want the publishers tab to be the source of truth for all of these going forward. So um, with the spring release, now you can see uh, any you know, review only or social only publishers available in here. You can see there's not a lot of detail uh, added in the, in the rows yet, but that's just kind of, this is kind of just the first step um, to us adding a lot more details. You can imagine a situation where maybe, you know, for Trustpilot, which is, a, which is a reviews only publisher, you know, we'd have details about the number of reviews they have on a publisher, as well as a type that might say reviews only. When you actually drill into one of these reviews only or posting only publishers, um, you'll be brought to a page where you can configure the publisher. So whether it's linking an account or selecting a match, um, this is where kind of all the workflow for getting set up on our reviews or posting on the publisher happens. Uh, moving on to some new filtering capabilities. So this is actually um, not on the publishers tab. I'll, I'll go into more detail on this in a second when I start my demo, um, but on the all listings tab, which also came out in the winter release, we've added a ton of new filter options available. Uh, most notably the ability to do negative filters. So if you look at the example here, uh, the label filter, you know, has like a does not include any of rather than include any of. This is really helpful for just creating advanced queries. Um, additionally, if you have custom fields within your knowledge graph, you can use those as filters as well. So it really opens up the option and control that people have when organizing their listings in the platform. And then finally, uh, you know, as with every release, we have our seasonal batch of new publishers. Uh, Yex is constantly going out, building partnerships around the world to help spread the breadth of our customers' data globally, um, increase visibility um, for everyone, you know, in every country. Uh, this is just kind of the short list of the ones we came out with in this spring. And then additionally, we're always making updates to our existing network. So we did a ton of great updates uh, this spring, including be able to provide service hours to Apple, uh, new posting features for Google, uh, being able to provide you know, vaccinated attributes to Yelp and more. Um, if you want to see the full list of new publishers as well as publisher updates um, to existing publishers, these can all be found in the release notes. Cool, and I'm just gonna stop sharing for a second while I pull up my demo screen. Okay, Jesse, do you mind just confirming that this is working? Yep. 
Cool. So here's a live instance of our Publishers tab. So this looks very similar to what I was just showing in the slides, but I just kind of walk you through um, how the, all these elements interact. So first off, you can see I have all my publishers sorted. Um, if I want to look for a specific publisher, I can do that, you know, add filters as well. Um, for this publisher I'm looking at right now, you can see it actually has alert associated with it. So it seems like there's something going wrong with 123 local. Um, if we want to get more information about you know, the issue or what might be going on, we can actually just drill into it here and be taken right to the 123, 123 local page. So this is really helpful. Um, you know, if you ever have a bunch of unavailable listings or not synced listings on 123 local, and you don't know why, you know, everything you're doing, you know, it doesn't seem to be making, you know, the content update or you still see errors. It may be due to publisher alert. So we see in this case that due to elevated error rates, data syncing to the publisher is temporarily disabled. So uh, this helps me know that even if I were uh, you know, syncing data to one degree local, which I'm not uh, for this given demo, um, if I were to opt in this listing, I could probably expect that there would be some issues with the list of things being updated or created uh, and getting that data out of the X and onto the publisher. So just coming back to the publishers tab here, I'm just going to walk you through the Google page. Um, so similar to Facebook one that we looked at, you know, we've got a nice little description about what Google is and why it's important. Um, in the same way that Instagram was an affiliated publisher of Facebook, where data we send to Facebook gets passed to Instagram as well. Um, any data we send to Google actually gets passed to Waze. So you can almost think of connecting, you know, awesome business to Google also as, you know, creating a listing on Waze so that people can navigate to that, you know, from that uh, first party experience, not just on Google Maps. Here, you know, you know, we can filter here, we can view all of the listings that are having issues right now. So this entity, Teddy Spaghetti, uh, isn't verified right now. So um, we've got some clear steps on how we can go about verifying it. You know, I could take all these actions within the publisher page itself. Um, so it's like a nice workflow where everything Google related is consolidated and not kind of overwhelmed by all the other, you know, tens of thousands of listings I might have on other publishers. Quick look at the configuration page. You can see, um, you know, we have all of the destructive fields here, categories, business name, address. Um, if I want to turn these on, it's as simple as, as doing that and pressing save. If I wanted to change the value that was coming from Knowledge Graph, so for example, um, if I had a custom name that I wanted to use, you know, this account's already set up using a custom field. Uh, by default, you know, Yex uses business name, but if I wanted to do something special for Google, um, I could use, you know, custom field two or comfort level. And these are just being populated directly from all of the custom fields available in my knowledge graph. Okay. And I'm gonna take you to the all listings tab now. So this is the all listings tab. This is gonna be really similar to what we used to call the locations tab, uh, which was the main entry point for interacting with listings. Here you'll find every single entity on every single publisher, you know, uh, summing up to the total number of listings. So in this account, we have 1500 listings. There's a lot to work through. If I didn't wanna do things on a per publisher basis, you know, this would be a good workflow for working through my listings issues. Um, this would also be a great place to do any exports. So if I wanted to you know, export a summary of all my listings, I could do that here as well. Um, what's really great about this page is these new filters. So by default, you know, we have entity filter, publisher filter, and status filter, but um, almost any field in Knowledge Graph can be used to filter things down. So um, even this random field, like number of cash registers, you know, I can look for entities that have a value in this field that's greater than one. Um, and that's just a pretty abstract thing that we can use to filter down um, to listings. So just a really helpful workflow tool. Um, you know, people who operate listings a ton of scale, you know, in some cases we have customers with millions of listings, having this sort of flexibility for filtering and making sure that they can get exactly the listings they want with only a few clicks um, is really, really helpful. So this is a feature we're very excited about with, that just came out with the spring release. Um, and then moving on, we, I'm also going to show you quickly our posting tab. Um, so with any listing subscription, uh, you also get the ability to post to Google and Facebook. And what that means is basically just create an ephemeral message that is not always lasting forever, um, but can contain scheduling and things like that. So, uh, you can see here, you know, I'm just going to go through the flow of adding a post. Um, I can actually select, you know, one or more entities from my account to post on them simultaneously as well as one or more publishers, add media and photos, 
and you know a message. So you know, happy Memorial Day. From the X and have these posts actually propagate out to the listing. So while it's not a piece of static listing content that kind of lives in the knowledge graph, um, posting is a nice extension of our listings product where you can you know, deliver announcements, uh, offer product offerings, um, do promotions, announce events, um, all from this page here. And then those will eventually be removed and they won't have to live on your listing forever. It's really helpful for use cases like COVID-19, you know, when you need to get a business business update out to your customers fast, you know, we, we may be open and we're open in some limited capacity. It might not be as simple as just changing the hours. Maybe you need to provide, you know, some images or text to, to actually, you know, enhance that message and make sure it's conveyed correctly. Additionally, you might want to, you know, create an event, invite people to come join it, um, or, you know, have someone be able to click a URL. So like if you want to associate a product offer with your posts, you know, you can say order today um, and have a URL that comes from Knowledge Graph. So when users click on that order from your listing, they'll be directed to your first party site or wherever you want them to go. So that is the summary of the demo. Um, I'm going to pass back to Jesse, is that right? Yes, and actually we're gonna hear from Pat on what is next in Yax listings. Cool. Awesome, um, sweet demo, Teddy, and thanks for the intro, Jesse. Hey everyone, I'm just gonna be introducing two exciting uh, new Google features that our listings product will be able to support soon. The first one is Google Place Actions and, and the second one is on Google Call History. Um, so we're already on the slide for Google Place Actions and this is gonna be a, a new feature that we're really excited about for our Google business profile restaurants or food businesses. If you've ever searched for a restaurant on Google, the first thing you'll see on your desktop or your phone is a knowledge card. And that knowledge card is just that small informational box, which includes all of the essential info for your restaurant, like your address, phone number, and hours. And specifically for Google Place Actions, these restaurant knowledge cards also have a really prominent blue order online button where customers can order food or, or pick up uh, or delivery. And an example of these are you know, shown on, on the slide here, um, but they can be managed in your Google business profile account. And with Yex listings, we'll soon be able to support these links in our platform. So in an upcoming release, we'll start syncing your existing order URL field to Google's takeout URL and a new delivery URL field to Google's delivery URL. We're also going to be adding two additional Yex fields named additional order URLs and additional delivery URL fields. And both of these fields will be able to support up to nine other links. So in total, you can directly manage up to 10 of these place action links for your restaurants or food businesses directly in the X platform. Again, we're really excited about this feature and its capabilities. And as I mentioned earlier, we'll be able to support this feature soon. So please reach out to your CSM if you're interested. Next slide. Cool. Uh, so moving on to our second feature now, Google has a new call history feature that you can turn on, which allows your business to track your customer's phone calls. And in a customer's kind of typical search journey on Google, they'll, they'll initiate you know, a call to your business by clicking on your business's knowledge card in one of two ways or areas. And that's either the gray call CTA button on your knowledge card, or by clicking on the phone number field listed, which is typically found next to the address or hours lines. And businesses can turn on this Google call history feature directly in their Google business profile account. And for Yex listings customers, you'll be able to turn this feature on in your account, which will enable call history for all of your locations. So we'll soon support this kind of on off toggle in the configuration tab of your Google business profiles publisher details page. Additionally, just by toggling this feature on in your Yex account, you can see analytics metrics about missed calls as well as answered calls on a per location basis, as well as dimensioned by date. So these analytics features will appear as new metrics in our report builder. And just to be extra clear, if you decide to keep this feature as off, you'll still be receiving calls to your business as usual. But call history is just a new listings feature that will provide your business with additional visibility and insights into your listings performance 
to just better improve your business, drive more conversion, and overall just deliver you know better customer experience. And so we're really excited about this feature and we'll be able to support this in an upcoming release. So please stay on the lookout for that. And lastly, if you have any other features or just general ideas that you'd like to see added to Yex listings, please submit them to our Hitchhikers Ideas Board. We really love hearing you know, those ideas and feedback from you guys. Uh, with that, I'm just gonna pass it back over to Jesse to close us out with some Q&A from the audience. Yeah, awesome. Uh, thank you, Pat. Um, and we're excited to, to take your questions. As a reminder, uh, there's a Q&A module um, in, in your sort of Zoom control settings for uh, this Zoom window. So please enter anything you have in there and we'll, we'll get started taking some questions. Um, the first one I just want to address is about the recording. And yes, we will be sending the recording out um, in a follow-up email to this webinar. So everybody who um, registered, whether they attended or not, will get this email uh, this recording sent to them in an email, but also um, you can always access our webinar uh, recordings on our Yext YouTube page. So uh, rest assured, you'll, ha you'll have the recording and um, you can always find them uh, yourself, whether you forget to register or not um, on the Yext YouTube. So stay tuned for that recording link. Um, as for some other questions. So um, the first one we have is, what is Google Business Profile? And I'll let any of you product managers jump in there. Sure. So Google Business Profile um, is the rebranded version of Google My Business. Uh, they're basically the same thing. Uh, Google just changed the name up on everyone. So it doesn't actually change functionality. Uh, that's just the new name of the tool uh, that, that we're all going to keep using. Got it. Um, and when will Google Place Actions and Google Call History be released? Uh, we are planning these for uh, our summer release, uh, if not earlier. So look out for those soon. Okay. Um, the next question is, which publishers am I able to configure sync settings on? Yeah, sync settings are supported for Google, Facebook, and Yelp today. And we plan to add more in the future. So if there are uh, specific settings that you do want, feel free to write into the ideas board and we'll prioritize those. Great. Um, next question is, will we be able to change publisher sync settings for specific entities rather than for the whole account? Yeah, so right now sync settings are limited to uh, the entire account. They're like a full account setting. Um, we have considered potentially doing entity specific sync settings in the future, but um, we don't know if it's the, the most compelling use case right now, but would, would love to hear more um, on the ideas board, uh, what your use case is and, and what you're looking for there. Awesome. Um, there's a question about, are we able to schedule posts in bulk? Tell you, you wanna take this one about the, the bulk post scheduling? Uh, yeah, so we, as of today, we can't schedule, public, schedule posts in bulk in the UI. Uh, we do have the social posting API, which was actually released with the spring as well. Um, and with that, you can schedule as many posts as you want um, and do them with, you know, iterative API calls to do it at scale. So um, it's a little bit more techno technologically nuanced, um, but it is possible via the API um, and something we hope to add into the UI workflow soon. Okay, perfect. Um... So in Google call history, we have a question um, about whether this is based off of um, the call button that shows up in the knowledge panel on a Google listing. I can take that one. Uh, that's right. That's one of the two areas uh, where call history will be tracked. Number field, which is tips of the address and outer lines as well. As well. It looks like you're having some internet net trouble, Pat. So just to go over that again. So yes, it, it is based off the the call button in the knowledge panel. Basically, there's there's two ways to click to call from a knowledge card. There's like the actual call button at the top, and you can also click on like the phone number itself. Um, but both of those are considered a call just the same. Uh, and, and can trigger the, the call history breakdown metrics. 
Okay, awesome. Um, will we be able to see, um, oh, there's a question about wondering on call metrics from provide, uh, publishers other than Google. Yeah, so right now only Google uh, supports this, but if other publishers support this in the future, um, we'd be happy to support it in our platform. Um, I, I did want to make one clarifying piece on the on the bulk posts. So you can schedule posts across multiple locations at the same time in our UI. Um, you can also use uh, this concept of, of embedded fields or basically dynamic content um, that will uh, that will fill in based off of the, the given location. Um, so you can basically schedule posts across a bunch of locations if you wanted to. So if you wanted to do a post for you know, 100 stores or something that is available in the UI. Awesome. Um, and we have one question just about in general, um, you know, from a, from a newer EX user, um, just about, could you clarify how a change gets made to listings? Um, you know, if you need to change like a, a, your address or your hours or something, um, do you mind just clarifying how that works? Sure, so how, how changing data on the listings network works is basically uh, you make that edit in our knowledge graph, um, and then we will update that content um, basically everywhere. So uh, this will apply to listings. So all the publishers, assuming they accept that field, um, but it also applies to other products as well. So if you are a pages or an answers customer um, and you update that content, we'll update it on, on those uh, experiences at the same time. So you'll have the exact same information on all your listings, all your websites and all your search experiences. Great. Um, we have a question about um, capabilities with posting on Google um, and uh, specifically like what kinds of content um, you're able to post on Google. And the question was specifically asking about videos. So um, as of today, we can support video and text post, or sorry, photo and text posts on Google, as well as the call to action URLs that I showed and event posts. Um, unfortunately, right now, Google's API does not support video posts. So it's not something we can integrate with as of today. Um, it is something that we've got our eyes on as soon as Google does make that functionality available. Uh, video, paste, video posting will come shortly after within the X platform. Um, one thing that's upcoming is the ability to offer posts. So this is essentially just a event post so with a start date and end date, uh, but can be associated with a specific sale item, you know, pricing information around an item um, that's gonna be coming soon with the summer release. Awesome. Um, we have a question, um, just maybe some advice from our product managers here of what have you found to be um, a frequently overlooked field when it comes to keeping your listings up to date? Yeah, the, the most frequently overlooked field, and this is something you'll see some content coming from us pretty soon actually, uh, is holiday hours. So businesses are actually generally pretty good about, about posting their regular hours, but um, they're not very good about indicating uh, their holiday hours. And if, if you've looked up a, a Google business listing um, during a holiday, uh, you might see sometimes they'll say something like, <clears throat> you know, hours might be affected by, you know, Memorial Day, for example. That's a pretty terrible experience for a consumer. I, I really would not feel, uh, you know, safe going to a business that may or may not be closed because of that warning. So even if your hours are the same for a holiday, uh, it's important that you specify them as such so that we can deliver those to the publishers and then they can uh, update their content accordingly. Okay, um, thank you. The next question we have um, is about Google UTMs. Um, and um, we have someone asking if there is, um, you know, a way to um, sort of embed Yext fields like location in the UTM so that we could automatically pull um, like these field values in without having to generate separate UTM um, codes? Yeah, so for this one, um, basically you would use that embedded field concept that we talked about earlier. Um, and so what you would do is um, you, you, you basically, in, in the, like the body of your post, you could pull in um, that tag and it would basically pull from a field and location. So let's, for, let's say, for example, your tracking tag uh, data was stored um, on a specific field, you would just reference that um, in your post. Now, if you're trying to do this in the actual call to action uh, fields, like the URL field of the post, I don't believe that works. I'm not sure if you know off the top of your head, Teddy, um, but I think that's a great idea for a feature that we could potentially add if, if we don't have it. 
Yeah, we can't embed fields directly in the call to action, but if you wanted to have a field in knowledge graph, which had the UTM, yeah, you, know, you could select that one. Awesome, thanks. Um, and then the next question we have is, is there a way to increase relevance um, for a, a Google business profile listing um, using popular keywords with Yext, um, such as like near me or something? Um, yeah, so the specifically the keyword near me is kind of tough because that's less of like a, a, a business business specific sort of thing. Um, that's more of are you actually you know physically close to where the person's searching? Um, but for other types of keywords, uh, the the two ways I'd recommend to think about this are one, um, you know, getting that complete profile. So you know, filling out every single possible Google attribute. A lot of those show up. Um, as basically keywords that people use in search all the time, or again, you know, filling out your menus, filling out your service lists, getting people to engage with reviews. Um, anytime someone mentions those keywords, that is indexable content that can be uh, used to, to, to surface your business. Um, another interesting um, thing here that's even outside of listings is, is potentially doing um, you know, different local pages or even something like service area pages. So you basically can spin up a bunch of uh, local pages for something like um, you know, tool repair near me or, or, or whatever it is. Um, you can have that hyper, -lo hyper local content and, and we'll basically it'll generate a page, you know, generate one for Chicago and one for New York and one for Miami and so on and so forth. So when someone does search for tool repair near me um, and, and they happen to be in New York, for example, they, they might get surfaced that uh, specific New York page uh, and continue to transact from there. Awesome, thanks, Kevin. Um, we have a question here. It's kind of asking for some, um, you know, best practices around a business hour, um, you know, changing like a last minute um, hours change. Um, and so the question is about, you know, how long does it take to publish, um, and is there any need to use the force sync uh, to speed that up? Sure. So, so the, the integration with Google is very fast. Um, you should see updates within seconds, if not minutes. Um, if you're doing a very large bulk update, so let's say you're updating your hours across, you know, 10,000 locations, for example, it might take a little bit longer, um, but generally you shouldn't see it take, you know, lo longer than that. Um, if you are, definitely reach out to us, you know, it might indicate something else is going on, but um, that's the general timeline there. Um, the the force sync button, um, it's less of a, a speeding something up and more of if you want to re-push your entire profile to a, to a publisher, kind of like a reset button. Um, that's what you can think of using force sync for. Got it. Um, and then we do have one question just um, about categories. So, um, and especially when it comes to sort of that re verification process of a listing. Um, so the question is if I need to change the category for a healthcare provider, um, but I don't like, I want to avoid it getting flagged for revalidation. Can I just add category one instead, or, um, you know, do you need to keep the old category? What makes it a change to the category? Yeah, so how Google thinks about categories is uh, there's one primary category and nine additional categories. Um, changing your additional categories is pretty safe. That's extremely unlikely to, to re-trigger um, re-verification, uh, but changing your primary category uh, it's pretty likely that it will re-trigger verification. So um, you have a few options here. Um, one, if you actually can re-verify the business, you know, feel free to change that primary category um, and then go ahead and, and re-verify. Um, if you're not in a position to do so, but you still want that new category to be considered for the business, um, definitely just add it as an additional category. That will be really safe. Um, but again, if you change that primary category, there's, there's always that risk. Um, there are ways around it, like, you know, having a bulk verified account or other verification methods, um, but it's just something that uh, you want to be safe about. Um, perfect. And then um, we have a question um, about the Google services field um, and, you know, the future ability, the possibility of ad, uh, managing that through Yext. Yeah, so this is actually something that we do power today. Um, so, so services are managed through our uh, service list object. It's, it's an ECL. You know, it's very similar to like a menu object. How this works is it's basically a, a separate you know list or, or document that's maintained in Yext. Uh, it's actually under the you know like like services list tab or the the menus tab. You can see those within Knowledge Graph. 
Um, and what you do is you basically fill one of those out um, with all the, the services that you support or the, the menu items that you have or whatever the example is. And then you associate that list with a given location. When you do that, we will deliver that list of services along with the base location profile to Google. Um, great. And then um, Calvin, could you just speak uh, to how um, Yext sends data, what, what that uh, direct integration looks like? Because there's a question about, you know, do we just push data? Do we pull any data back? So could you just uh, clarify that, please? Yep. So in, in terms of integrations with publishers, um, you know, the base integration is just sending data, of course. Um, in terms of data that we get back, so there's, there's two types of data to think about here. One is, one is the listings data specifically, and then the other is more of like the, the reviews and analytics. So for reviews and analytics, Q&A, things like that, uh, if the publisher supports it, you know, we in general will we'll pull it in. Um, most publishers support analytics and a handful support reviews, so we get that back. Um, in terms of pulling like core listings data, we do this through our publisher suggestions feature, um, which is supported for, for a bunch of publishers. Um, basically, if there's a potential change in data, um, that will uh, appear in our system as a public suggestion, and it'll be up to you as the user to decide if you want that content um, to go live to the listing or not. Um, you might also potentially be asking about like the initial sync. So during the imp implementation phase, um, we do have a uh, connector uh, source for Google My Business in our connectors framework and knowledge graph. So connectors is basically how you can pull data in from a source um, you know, it doesn't even have to be a listings publisher. We have other sources or it can even be a, you know, like a custom API endpoint. Um, that is something you can use to pull in data during initial implementation. Um, and we are planning on making that uh, Google specific connector a bit better um, in, in the coming release or so. Awesome. Um, well, I think that's the last question that we have. Uh, thank you everyone so much for um, engaging with us here. And these have been some great questions that I hope uh, everyone was able to learn something from. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is um, I am sending the Yext YouTube channel um, into the chat um, where you can watch previous webinars uh, on demand or workshops um, or platform basic sessions. So it's a great resource to, to have going forward. Um, just in terms of uh, making sure you see the recordings. Um, and then if you have any other questions that you don't think of today, um, please feel free to post them in our Hitchhikers community. Um, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear what questions you still have. Um, and then if you have an idea, just to echo what Pat said earlier, we really do rely on our um, ideas board on, on the Hitchhiker website. Um, to understand what features it is that you're looking for. It can be within listings or in any of our other areas of the platform, um, but don't hesitate to post your ideas and questions um, and, you know, anything you're looking to see from Yex there um, and then questions in the Hitchhiker community. Um, so with that, we will wrap it up for today, but thank you all again um, for your attendance and your engagement, and we hope to see you on another webinar soon. Thank you.